Hello, got a visitor um, who's joining me in this one um, because this tutorial is all about Georgia Bear and his ailment that he has. Come on, sit down. Oh, you sleeping? He's sitting on one of the seats. I quite like sitting on the dining table with me, so he's just been in the garden, so I put a tea towel on the seat, but he's slipping around a bit. Anyway, um, so as I say, this tutorial is all about George, and at the beginning of the year, we noticed that, I don't know how long he's going to sit here with me, but let me put my arm around him. <laughs> at the beginning of the year, we noticed that the muscle in the top of his head had wasted away ever so quickly. Within three days, we noticed like a little dip in the muscle on top of his head, which is quite bulbous because he's got quite a big head. And we noticed it. Um, we took him to the vet and uh, he thought it might have been an ear infection because he did have a lot of gunk and red nastiness in the, his ear. Um, so he had some ear drops and some antibiotics, um, but there was that always concern there that it was some sort of neurological problem. Um, I was a veterinary nurse for five years after I left school and my immediate concern was as soon as I saw muscle wastage in the face that it was something nasty. So um, my brain went overload and I started googling and um, figured it out it could be a brain tumour. But I did, we, we didn't want to worry so we followed the vet's advice, we did all his um, ear treatments and all that. Um, but it didn't, no muscle came back and uh, we thought we'd go ahead for the MRI scan because he's insured with pet plan. So we took him to North Downs referrals for full MRI of his head and these are the results I thought I'd show you. Um, it's quite clear there where the arrows are pointing, that's the mass in his brain. And it's at the very, very bottom of his brain, so it's inoperable. And it's called a tringeminal nerve, which is basically the nerves have a sheath around them, and that's where the tumour is. So it's pressing on all the nerves that control the chewing muscles in his face. And they also control blinking, chewing, all that sort of thing. So basically he's got kind of a bit of a zombie face going on on that side as you can see as he turns round. Um, so anyway, so it was bad news. I was kind of expecting it. Um, a little bit worrying when she said he only had two to three weeks to live um, if we didn't go ahead with any treatment. He's off. Um, but we went ahead with um, radiation, which he had once a week for six weeks. It was a very, very quick procedure. He literally... Come here. Come on. Pop, pop. Come on. Pop, pop. Pop, pop. Pop. Come on. That's it. Get involved. Get involved. Sit down. So he had radiation treatment for six weeks. Very quick, he went in, had anaesthetic, and he was in and out within an hour and a half. No ill effects whatsoever. You've seen the cat, haven't you? Sit down. <laughs> Sit. Sit. Watch it out the window. Sit. Okay, so he was in and out within an hour and a half. He No ill effects from the radiation whatsoever. Um, he'd, he'd go in happy and come out happy. Tiny little bit wobbly on his feet, but then within... Sit down a little bit. You are within an hour of bringing him home, he was absolutely fine eating his dinner, um, just normal George. Um, but at this point, we've not noticed anything particularly wrong with him. And then, as time went by, we started to notice that his eye was glazing over and getting very dry. Um, and this was because his tear duct is not producing tears and he's not blinking as much. So Time after time, trying all different drops, lots of lubricants in there, false tears. George is up and tweet, come on. Um, keeping it nice and moist, but it got ulcerated and he knocked it on the baby gate and it literally exploded, which was really, really grim. And all this jelly juice came out of his eye. Um, we took him to the vets, 
they said there's no point taking his eyeball out because he's on a really high dose of steroids, which means it won't heal. Steroids really reduce healing rate. So um, I'll show you his lip as well in a minute because he can't feel anything in his lip. He gets his tooth caught when he's eating his dinner. So he'll catch it on his cone line like that, bite it, and then it won't heal. Um, it, or it will heal up a little bit and then he'll have his dinner again and he'll bite it or he'll yawn and his lip will get caught again. So these are all side effects of the tumour because obviously it's affecting all of the nerves in that side of his face. Are you lying down there? Oh, you misery gaps. Um, also, his hair is not growing back from where he had the radiation. So the shaved patch on his head, the shaved bits on his legs, it's all side effects of the steroids. Um, we're actually reducing. He was on a huge dose. He was on 25, was he on 25? No, 20 milligrams once a day, which is almost a human dose. But he's actually on 5 milligrams a day now, and he'll soon be reducing to 5 milligrams every other day. And he's kind of getting his character back a bit now. He was going a bit loopy loo, um, but he's he seems to be. He seems to be doing okay. Um, he potters around an awful lot. Um, like old people do, they go into a room and they think, oh, what was I going in here for? And he'll go to the kitchen and then come in the living room and then night times are horrendous because he won't settle. He just potters around. He'll lay somewhere for 10 minutes and then he'll want to lay somewhere else. Uh, the only way I can get him to settle is if I let him on the bed and he'll quite happily lay there for hours. So me and Tony end up in the fetal position up by the pillows and George is stretched out along the whole end of the bed. Um, he's just a bit wobbly really. Um, he kind of slips on the wooden floor and sometimes he looks a little bit like he's a bit dazed and confused but the other side effects well kind of the next step is if the tumour grows um, at the moment, the steroids are kind of keeping it under control. Uh, the radiation is still buzzing around in there working. Although he had it around two months ago, um, apparently it carries on working. Um, so once we've reduced and then eventually stopped the steroids, that's going to be the waiting game. Um, I'm sorry, I'm saying um a lot because I've got a lot to tell you. Um, he's Basically, the next step is if the tumour does grow... We could find that he's falling over, um, having fits. He might get even more neurological problems, which means he won't kind of realise where his feet are and he might knuckle over onto his ankle but not kind of replace his foot back. Um, they said that he a lot of dogs will go into a corner and press their head against the wall and not realise how to get back and they'll find comfort in that because they know where they are. Um, and they can't figure out how to get out of a, a space. Come on. But is What are you doing? Come here. At the moment, he is in a space. He's under the table. And he won't come and sit next to me. Come here. Come on. Let's finish the video and everyone can see. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Sit, sit there and I'll turn you around. Ready? Oh. There you go. So he's back. And he got his nice side. Um, I'll show you if I can. Uh, how can I show you his lip? Turn around. Um, right, stay there, Bear. Stay. 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 Sit. Sit. Stay. 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 Sit. Stay. That's it. Right. Just about show you now. <laughs> okay, so there's his lip, which he catches all the time, and there's his poly eye. And you can see um <laughs> Sorry baby, we show I'm trying to show everyone what's wrong with you in case we can help other people. So can you see his bone poking out there? It's like a skeleton really, it's not got much muscle going on. Um there we go, I've stopped fiddling around now. So that's George. Um, he keeps coughing because I think maybe his throat and his swallowing 
nerves are affected as well and he did have this strange thing where he went in for anaesthetic and his a salivary gland had just filled up and the valve that released the saliva into his throat wasn't doing anything so which made him snore an awful lot but he's not doing that he's just kind of clear on his throat and they do a funny thing called an inward sneeze which your dogs might do they do a like a pig thing so that's gross but um sit down are you not really comfortable <laughs> oh dear so i'll keep you all posted how he's doing this is a really long video i'm really sorry but um i know most of you are interested and if you don't know me or george and you've just clicked on because of the title of the video um feel free to comment um get in contact with me because i mean if i can help it's it's a really rare condition that he has and if i can help um people understand or if you're going through the same sort of thing you off you off skis no turn around if i can help someone who's got a dog with the same sort of thing um these nerve sheath tumors can happen anywhere where there's a nerve you can get a tumor so um as i say if we can help someone feel free to comment and i'll message back always um that's all i wanted to say really um do you want to say anything just want some food don't you He's always hungry, as you know, steroids make you ravenous, so he's always hunting for food, and I think that's most of the reason why he potters around a lot, is because he's looking for food. Um, also, the steroids make him pee a lot and drink a lot, probably the other way around, drink a lot, pee a lot. So we've got little pee pads dotted around the house, but it's just it's something that we wanted to do. Um, a lot of people, if they'd found out that their dog had a brain tumour, um, they just put him down but his character is fine and he's he's still eating he still wants to go for a walk he's not suffering um, he can't feel anything in his lip or his eye so just let him get on with it really um, if he starts fitting um, then me and Tony know that that's enough's enough um, with um, Tony's mum had a dog with a really bad epilepsy and it's something that's really nasty and horrible to go through so we've just decided that as and when he starts having fits will be time to say goodbye um but at the moment he's doing pretty good <laughs> and he's under the table now so um I'll leave you be have enjoy the rest of your week this will probably be my last video until the weekend because I've got to try and sell my car and find another job so I'm having some personal issues of my own to deal with as well as George so um, just comment if you want to comment, rate, subscribe and all that jazz and um, love you lots, bye, Georgie do you want to say bye, George, 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 no he's in the kitchen, no he's coming back, quick, quick say goodbye, come here, come here, I'm going to have to turn it around for you. Bear Bear, George, what's this? George, say goodbye to everybody. George, come in, come in, come in. George, there he is. Anyway, um, see you guys later. I'll keep you um, posted on his prognosis and how he's getting along. Um, he's probably going to have another... Uh, MRI scan in maybe two or three months because um, his insurance is renewed now. Um, all this has cost us about £6,000 for MRI and the radiation treatment and we um, got 4000 of that covered so it was 2000 extra so £1,000 each but if we can keep hold of him for six to nine months more, which we think we might, the vet said possibly up to a year or more, but uh, he is getting dodgy on his feet. So we'll just see. We'll wait and see, and we'll keep you all posted. And I'm going to go now because I'm rambling again. I knew I would. As soon as I start talking about George, I can't shut up. So um, love you all. George sends you big sloppy kisses, and see you later. Bye.